all of us have one thing in common here today, and that is we all had a mother, or have a mother. And so we should appreciate them. I was reading this week, it was uh, something that I think that really a lot of times that we don't get down in our hearts as men. But uh, uh, Billy, Sun Billy Sunday made this statement. Billy Sunday was a great preacher and uh, God used him tremendously. But he said this to uh, husbands. He said, try praising your wife even if it does frighten her at first. Some of you will get that on the next train that goes by, all right? 2 Timothy chapter 3 is a wonderful story of, of a mother and a grandmother. I want to read that, those verses in just a minute. But when I thought about motherhood, motherhood is a great honor. And it's also a great responsibility. And yet, it's also synonymous with the factor of being a servant. Mothers are always doing something, you know, cleaning snotty noses, uh, picking up after the kids, cooking the meals, so forth and so on. Uh, the things go on, they're endless as far as what mothers do. Uh, I read something very interesting also this week that was spotted on a church sign. Now, it wasn't on our sign out there, but if evolution is true, how comes mothers still have only two hands? <laughs> mothers have to have many hands and doing what they do. I read a story this week about a little boy who was taking, his name was Kevin, and he was going to turn five years old. And so his mother, uh, that was going to be on the next day, and his mother, as she put him to bed that night, she was trying to convey to him this thought that, uh, you know, all this time she's been trying to teach him about him being four years old, she'd have him raise four fingers. So that night she was trying to teach uh, Kevin about the fact the next day when he woke up, he was going to be five. And so as she tried to get this point across to him, uh, Kevin nodded enthusiastically and she, he all of a sudden stuck up all five, four fingers and the thumb and she says, well, what's that about? She says, I'm a whole handful. <laughs> Now, all you mothers who've had your hands full, we give a round of applause this morning. Would you do that? I thank the Lord for the mother that he let me have the opportunity to uh, uh, have and the things that she did for me. If it wasn't for uh, her teaching, uh, I would not uh, have a lot of things that I do now. As a matter of fact, I do a lot of things that she taught me now, though they're odd. Uh, I've taught them in, uh, to young couples. One of the principles I've taught the young couples my mother taught me was the principle of finances. And I, I've helped a lot of couples in regards to this. Matter of fact, I still use the same plan. Now, I'm not going to go into that plan today here. That's not the objective. But the fact of the matter is, I use that same plan today. Mother, ta mother taught me about finances. And it's worked up through the years. And if you're interested sometime, just come and see me, all right? I won't push it off on you this morning. Here in the book of 2 Timothy, if you look there very quickly... We have a young man by the name of Timothy. Timothy was a young preacher boy that uh, became the pastor of the church of Ephesus. And I wish I had a lot more time to talk about that this morning and how his mother and his grandmother had such an influence on him as a young preacher boy through the, of course, the ministry of the Apostle Paul. But look here, if you would, at 2 Timothy chapter 3. And down in verse number uh, 13, Paul begins to tell Timothy some very important things he's to be careful about because he's already been taught them uh, 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 from his mother and his grandmother. Look at it. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. One of the greatest things that you can do as a mother as well as a father, you can teach your kids to be aware and give them warning of people who teach contrary to the Word of God. Amen? You see, the Word of God is important. 
And if you go on in the next verse, it says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child, read it with me, Thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, in a few minutes, I'll share more with you in regards to who taught those things to him and how he was to continue in those things that he learned. And it's important because they were based upon the principles of God's word. And Paul goes on to say in verse 16, he says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And he says, Timothy, it's profitable. Don't ever get away from the word of God that you've been taught by those who loved you. Because it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. He says you'll be able to pastor that church there at Ephesus the way you should if you stick to these biblical principles that I've given to you. Now how was he going to do that? Well turn back to the book of Proverbs chapter 27. Proverbs chapter 27. I want you to look down at one verse here in the scripture and then I want to show you something this morning. Proverbs 27 and look at verse 17. The title of my message this morning is this, A Sharp Mother. Now, that's important because of what I'm going to illustrate here this morning. But I want you to read the verse with me, if you would, in just a few seconds. Two weeks ago, I was reading through the scripture, and the Lord all of a sudden just said, that's what I want you to preach on, on Mother's Day. A sharp mother. Now, I'm not talking about one who is sharp in regards to uh, uh, being nasty to their kids or are nasty to someone else and what they might say, but sharp in their influence in that which they teach to their children and to others. Look at it, verse number 17, and I want you to read it out loud with me this morning. Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. This morning I brought two instruments with me to the pulpit. Now I'm not going to do anybody harm because this number one wouldn't do any harm. It's simply an illustration. That's a bread knife. That's not a knife that really would sharp you. But in my right hand is a knife sharpener. Now if I had, and I took time to demonstrate through a, a knife, showing you there's something important about having a sharp knife. A sharp knife is very important because a dull knife is more detrimental than a sharp knife. Did you know that? Years ago, as a young man, I was going to go into the industrial uh, line. I had a scholarship to GE. And uh, before I got, uh, went into that, I, of course, was a machinist. Um, I went into the industrial field, so to speak, in my education uh, as a young uh, man. And our high school had the largest industrial arts program uh, that you could have. I found out very quickly, if you don't have a sharp blade on the tool, you'll mess up whatever you're, you're working on. And... I found that even more so when I worked for Cincinnati Diamond Tool Company in Cincinnati, Ohio. I was a machinist there on precision diamond, tool, diamond tools. One tool was worth over $250, just a little tool. And if that was not cut right, then we could lose a lot of money. So it was important for me to have my tools sharpened correctly and I would have to go to the grinding wheel and grind those things or take and make sure they were sharp. Because I had to have uh, them within a thousandth of an inch. Now we use what we call micrometers to measure that width. And they had to be sharp because if you didn't, you couldn't cut that fine enough in order for it to be put on then a grinding wheel 
in order to have the precision that it needed in regards to cut through cement or whatever you were cutting with with that diamond wheel or tool. It's the same way in regards to you mothers as well as you fathers that you sharpen your children in the right way. You see, a dull tool can cause an accident. Do you know it's better for you to have a sharp knife and be able to cut something that is with a dull knife because most of the time you'll cut yourself with a dull knife. God wants you to be sharp in taking and forming your children under the biblical principles. You remember what the Bible says? The Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen? And you and I are to take the Word of God to help not only to sharpen or shape our children, but also the Word of God as a sword or a knife or spear is a protective instrument. You see, the Word of God taught to your children will protect them in the time of false doctrine. In a time uh, uh, that we're in that people want to deceive to some false doctrine. And I began to think about that and the Word of God came to me in, in regards to the person Timothy. And I want you to turn back to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, not chapter 3, chapter 1. And we get some thoughts here in regards to this young man, Timothy, and what he was supposed to do in regards to that which has been taught to him by two individuals. 2 Timothy chapter 1, and look, if you would, down at verse number 1. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son. Now, evidently, Paul had had some kind of influence upon Timothy in the ministry, and he called him a son. He wasn't his physical father. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and, and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve for my forefathers, with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. Now, would you read verse 5 with me, everyone together? When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and am persuaded thee that in thee also. Here were two individuals that had an indelible impression upon the young man Timothy, and that was, number one, his grandmother. You might be a grandmother here today and you may think, well, I don't have a great responsibility. You have a greater responsibility to teach your grandchildren the Word of God. Teach them the principles of righteous living. Teach them principles how to live a godly life. But he doesn't stop there. Look at verse number 6. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear but a power of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me his prisoner but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Read verse number 9 with me would you please? Who has saved us and called us with a what? Holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Would you bow your heads in prayer, please? Now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, iron sharpeneth iron. Whose life are you sharpening for protection, for shaping, for help? What are you doing in the life of other people, especially as a mother? Are you sharpening your children's lives that they can be protected? They can be the person that God would have them to be. 
Father in heaven, I pray you take your word this morning. Speak to our hearts. We might know the great responsibility that we have of affecting other people's lives, especially our children. The great influence that a mother has, Lord, over their children, even more so many times than a father. So I pray today you would help me as I try to share with these good folks the principles of God's Word in regards to helping to sharpen and to shape and to help and to care for those we have responsibility over. May thy word truly get a hold of our hearts today. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Laura Ingalls Wilder made this statement. Lessons learned at my mother's knee last through life. She also said this. The mother is and must be, whether she knows it or not, the greatest, strongest, and most lasting teacher her children have. And I believe that's true. And as I thought about that, I went back to this life, these lives, I should say, of Timothy's grandmother and his mother. And so I want you to turn over two more chapters and let's go back to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and look down there, if you would please, at verse number 14 and 15. It says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast what, folks? Learned. There's a lot of things that we learn that we forget and we shouldn't. Especially those things that have been taught by your mother. And I thought about that this, mo this morning and through this past week and the week before. Mothers can sharpen their children by protecting them. Take your Bible, if you would, very quickly and turn back to the book of Exodus. Don't move out of 2 Timothy, but put a place there and turn back to the book of Exodus chapter 2. You see, we have a story there, and I'm going to try to give this very quickly. But in Exodus chapter 2, we have the story of a young man that came on the scene by the name of Moses. And how God took and used a mother to protect him. Because God wanted to use him. I want to ask you a question today. Have you protected your children so God can use them? Well, you know the story about Moses, but look there if you would. In chapter 2 of Exodus, it says, And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. Now you know the story of Moses. After he was born, because of Pharaoh's uh, uh, command that all the men children of the Hebrews would be killed, they took a little Moses and put him in a bulrush, a, a basket, and put him in the water that he could be taken and protected against being put to death. And you know the story how his sister, when the Pharaoh's daughter had, uh, had found uh, Moses there in the little basket in the, uh, among the bulrushes in the water, how that his sister says, can I get, get someone to take care of the baby for you? And of course, we know what happened. She took and got her own mother, Moses' only mother, to protect him. You say you are a protector. God has given you that great responsibility to protect your children. What greater way could you protect your children than what Paul gave to Timothy here in 2 Timothy chapter 1 to protect him from wrong teaching? So how can you protect them from wrong teaching? By teaching them the truth of God's word. And if you fail to teach your children the Word of God, who else is going to teach them? You see, we have a lot of people shirking the responsibility of teaching their children the right principles. We're kind of leaving things up to everybody else instead of teaching them on our own. And here was uh, his mother, Moses, that protected her son. 
and took him and raised him. And I'm sure she taught him the word of God because later he avoided the fact of staying in the Pharaoh's home and chose to go out to the desert where God was going to shape him even more to be the deliverer of the people of Israel out of Egypt. So I want to ask you the question this morning. Are you protecting your children by giving them the word of God? Folks, we have all kinds of false doctrine being taught today. We have all kinds of theories and so forth being taught to our kids. Listen, you better teach your kid right the word of God than when they go to college today, they don't deny God who they were raised to know about. Amen. How many kids have been turned away from God because of some professor who taught them false doctrine, taught false teachings? Well, you can protect them from that if you teach them the Word of God. That God is real. He has always been and always will be. And the Word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Amen. So you have a great responsibility of sharpening your children and shaping them by the Word of God to protect them. But wait a minute. Would you take your Bible and turn to the... You're in the book of Exodus, or maybe you're still back in the book of Timothy. Turn over to the book of 1 Samuel, would you please? 1 Samuel chapter 1. Mothers can sharpen their children by protection. Mothers can sharpen their children by giving them to the Lord, presenting them to the Lord. I want to ask you a very important question today. Have you presented your children to the Lord? Have they been dedicated to the Lord? You see, we forget about that. Many times our responsibility is to give our children to the Lord. Hey, listen, God can protect them better than we can in the first place. Amen? Amen. And we need to give them to the Lord that he would protect them. Well, here in the book of 1 Samuel and chapter number 1, we find the story there of uh, Samuel's mother, how she pled to God for a child, and God gave her that child. But if you go over to chapter uh, 1 and down in verse number 24, the Bible says, And when she had weaned him, speaking of Samuel, she took him up with her with three bullocks and one aphra of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him, say it with me, unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. Now, the house of the Lord at that particular time was a tabernacle. And, you know, one of the great responsibilities we have is not only teaching our children the Word of God, but we need to take them to church. Amen. Take them to God's house. You see, God wants us to have the influence on our children. How many children do not go to church because their parents don't go to church? You see, you have a great influence on your children where they will learn about the Lord. But let's go a little bit further. And it says, and the child was young, and they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as I so liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition which I ask of him. Therefore, also, I have lent him to the Lord. How long, folks? As long as he liveth. You see, sometimes we want to take and put our hands on our children after we've already given them to the Lord. Sometimes we don't want them to leave home. We don't want them to go to the mission field. We don't want them to go into the ministry. Why? Because they may go to a faraway country. Or they may go to a faraway state. You see, God wants us to know our responsibility is to give our children to him. Because he'll protect them. He'll meet their needs. And so God wants us to do like Samuel's mother did. To give them unto him. Present them. Matter of fact, uh, maybe you've never dedicated your children to the Lord. You say, well, my kids are, are raised. We ought to dedicate them to the Lord still. Start out when they're a baby. Bring them and dedicate them to the Lord and say, Lord, this child belongs to you. I'm putting this child in your hands. I'm trusting you to protect them all the days of their life. And so we have a great responsibility and we do that by presenting them to the Lord. 
A mother can sharpen her children by giving them to the Lord. Take your Bible and turn over to the book of John chapter 2. Mothers can sharpen others or the children by their request. You have something you can talk to the Lord about. What's that? Well, look at John chapter 2. And look at verse 1 through 5, if you would, very quickly. I'm talking about a sharp mother. A mother who will take the opportunity and time to do what she ought to do as a Christian and present her children to the Lord. Look at John chapter 2. And look down to verse number 1, if you would, please. And the third day there was marriage in Cain of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage, and when they wanted wine, read it with me. The mo Come on, read it. The mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Now stop right there. How often are you praying for your children? How often are you making requests in regards to your children? By the way, let me say something to you parents today. And I read this and I meant to bring the statement in that Dr. Charles Stanley, I have devotions every day with Charles Stanley, not person to person, but on the computer. But Dr. Stanley brought something out very important that I thought was good. And that is, you remember the scripture that says, train up a child in the way of the Lord, and when he's old he won't depart from it? Some of you are beating yourself up because maybe your children are not living for the Lord. Don't, but he went on to say, he says, don't depend upon a proverb, depend upon the promises of God. God wants us to teach our children the promises of the Lord. And not just depend upon a proverb. If those proverbs come to pass, that's fine. But don't depend upon a proverb, depend upon the promises of God in making your request unto God. Doesn't the Bible say, make your request unto God? There in the book of Philippians chapter 4. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. What greater request can you and I make unto the Lord than to pray for our children? Amen? Amen. There should never be a day that goes by that you don't pray for your kids. Pray for their needs. But most of all, if they're not saved, pray for their salvation. You know, if they've been taught by you, the scriptures on salvation, just like Eunice and Lois did, the mother and the grandmother, they'll come to the Lord because the Bible tells us here in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, Paul said this to Timothy. He says, look, Timothy, but continue on the things that which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. You see why it's important for you and I to teach our children the principles of God's word in regards to how to be saved? Teach your children the fear of the Lord. So Timothy was taught those things. Jesus was requested to do something. You request Jesus to do something for your children. Remake your request daily known unto him. But wait a minute. Look back there at 2 Timothy chapter 3. There's something else. Mothers can sharpen their children by continually teaching them through their influence. You see, your influence means a lot. Your children may be grown up. But how's your influence on them today? Are you showing them the fear of the Lord? Are you teaching them that you're still going to stick to the principles of God's Word? Look there again, verse number 5. That from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. You see, the sustaining influence on Timothy's life was because of the fact of the influence of his mother and grandmother. It wasn't just a one-time thing. It was an ongoing thing in their life. It's to be an ongoing thing in 
your life as well. Be faithful to the Word of God. Be faithful to the principles that you have taught them, that you live by them. I, I, I see so often that when children begin to leave the home and they get away, then parents go away from the fact of devotions that they've had with their children. Or prayer. Or being faithful to God's house. That's important because if your children say, well, it's not important to them, it must not, it's not going to be important to me. So we need to do that. It's important. An old Yiddish proverb made this statement. One mother achieves more than a hundred teachers. Let me read that again. One mother achieves more than a hundred teachers. Why? Because of their influence in their children's lives. Abraham Lincoln said this, The greatest lessons I ever learned were at my mother's knee. Thomas Edison made this statement, I did not have my mother long, but she cast over me an influence which has lasted all my life. The good effects of her early training I can never lose. If it had not been for her appreciation and her faith in me at a critical time in my experience, I should never likely have become an inventor. I was always a careless boy, and with a mother of different spiritual caliber, I should have turned out badly. But her firmness, her sweetness, her goodness were potent powers to keep me in the right path. My mother was the making of me. Is that true in your life? Is your influence such a way that you have a lasting impression, not only in regards to salvation, but daily living the principles of God's Word? You see, mother, unless you're willing to stoop down and get your hands dirty, you will miss the real riches of motherhood. By dying to your own desires and pouring your life into someone else, you become like Christ and create a godly influence upon those children, not only today, but in the future. Are you a sharp mother? Do you remember? Iron sharpeneth iron. Are you sharpening the lives of your children now? And will you do that in the future? A sharp mother. Not one just that looks sharp outwardly, physically. But one who is sharp inwardly. Because you know the Lord. And you're living biblical principles through your life. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? Every head bowed and every eye closed. You see, Paul said something to tempt that is very important. For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I'm sure that it is in you as well. So I want to ask you today, is your faith unfeigned? That means, number one, is it true? Are you truly a born-again child of God, mother? And I speak to fathers as well. Secondly, is your unfeigned faith mean that you just keep on being the right influence in your life? Only you can answer that question. Are you saved today? Number two, are you living the right type of life that Jesus Christ can be seen through you. Our Father in heaven, I ask you this morning, before I close this service, if there's anybody here that's not saved, does not know Jesus Christ as a personal Savior because of what the Word of God says, that Christ died for our sins, He shed His blood, and he'll give unto us eternal life if we'll call upon him and ask him to save us. And then, Father, I pray if there's those here this morning that need to rededicate their life, need to make a decision 
to become that sharp mother, that sharp father, that sharp teenager that would influence other people in the right direction of the way of the cross. I pray that you would speak to their hearts. I pray that you would just work in our lives today and you would accomplish your plan and purpose in and through this invitation we're about to give. And we'll thank you for it. Save that soul that's near as hell and draw us all closer to you to be the influence that we should be upon other people's life because iron sharpeneth iron. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you